I never thought I'd get to cast a spell in Hogsmeade. I never knew what 120 miles per hour felt like until Fast and Furious supercharged. I never thought coming face to face with a hungry T-Rex would make my dad scream so loud. And I have never felt more scared or alive. Buy your ticket online and save up to $25. Visit UniversalStudiosHollywood.com. Valid online on one-day general admission for select dates through May 24th, 2018. California residents only. Restrictions apply. Blog Talk Radio. Hello, listeners in the world of Harlem, wherever you may be. I hope you are doing well today. Uh, And if not, hopefully after the show, you're a little, you're feeling a little better and Definitely more informed. And let's start that off. And, you know, we like to talk about what's trending wherever you are, but especially in Harlem and trending on HarlemWorldMag.com, our website. Uh, we start off with uh, Harlem's uh, Moikansi Kagama from uh, the Imagination Film Festival, I'm sorry, Foundation, uh, talks about Black Panther and more uh, on. The Danny Tisdale Show, this is a podcast we did a, a little while back. Uh, Samuel Adam, Adams, the beer brewer, helps uh, one of our uh, entrepreneurs in the community, the Harlem Chocolate Factory, to uh, gain footing in the business and increase profit, as she has done since uh, she did this partnership with Samuel Adams. And also the amazing story of Harlem's Esther Jones, the original Betty Boop. That's right, believe it or not. And I think that's why this story continues the trend, even though we posted it probably two or three years ago. Uh, but check them out. Let us know what you think. And now we're going to get into, well, a little bit in seconds, uh, uh, another podcast that we know will trend. Uh, but check us out on social media, twitter.com backslash HWMag, also on Facebook uh, at uh, uh, hashtag HWMag, and also Harlem World Magazine. And, of course, as I mentioned earlier, you can check us out on the website at HarlemWorldMag.com. Deep breath, uh, and as we continue to celebrate uh, Women's History Month, and don't get it twisted every day is women's history month don't think that just for this month that's it that's where it starts that's where it ends get with the program every day as we live check it out and guess what we have someone to uh talk uh, 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 with us a little bit about the history uh but with the world um it's endless conversation, uh, and that's Erin Velarde. She is founder and CEO of Boat Run Lead, a national nonprofit organization leveraging technology training to accelerate the number of women in civic and political leadership. Erin first launched Boat Run Lead as vice president of the program and communications at the White House Project, uh, establishing the largest national training program readying women for public office and civic life training over 15,000 women. Wow. Uh, She served as a leadership development consultant uh, for a range of clients, including Yahoo Business and Human Rights Division uh, and Athena Center for Leadership Studies at Bernard College, Columbia University, of course, in Harlem, uh, where she developed the Athena Core 10 uh, program, an innovative set of leadership competencies for 21st century women leaders based on leadership research and gender analysis. Wow, I like that. Uh, She also worked with a diverse range of clients, including Fortune 100 companies, Global Girls Initiatives, and the U.S. Department of State, reaching women leaders in a dozen international cities. Velarde serves on the advisory board of Girls Meet World, the New American Leadership Project, and Democracy.com, and is on the leadership teams of Vision 2020 and Political Parity. She is the executive producer of Ann Richards, Texas, a documentary about the late pioneer, uh, pioneering governor who I loved. Erin has also appeared on CNN BBC, Fox News, Wall Street Journal, The Guardian, O, Oprah Magazine, and now Harlem World Magazine. As I take a deep breath, (laughs) Miss Velarde, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me today. 
Well, it's great having you on the show, and uh, without delay, I want to get right into it and talk about the great work that you've been doing. And uh, I, I first want to say uh, it's a self-plug for my mother, but you know she would have loved the work that you're doing at uh, Vote Run Lead. Who inspired you, Aaron, to do the work that you're doing? To be quite honest, my sister had me subscribed to Ms. Magazine um, <laughs> in print when I was probably in the sixth or seventh grade. She was about 10 years older than I am and went off to college. Uh, first in our family, wow. she was to go to school and, you know, took her first, uh, you know, Women's Studies 101. And next thing you know, I was getting Ms. Mm-hmm. Ma- Magazine. And <laughs> I don't think my parents knew what it was. Um, What's that? And it really helped to uh, write, to, you know, opened my eyes to um, how women were treated not only in the United States but in the world. And my I call her my political mother, um, Marie Wilson, mm. who created Take Your Daughter to Work Day. She also created yeah. President Barbie. I think you're seeing now a, a real diversity of the Barbies coming out, and she was really the force behind that. Um, I, mm. She was my mentor and boss at the White House Project where I first started Vote Run Lead as a program. So those two women were pretty instrumental. And uh, that that's, makes sense, I guess, when you say it and you think about it, you know, those uh, uh, initial kind of teasers to to um, uh, turn vote run lead into what it has become. And with the success that you've had and that you continue to have, did you ever have an aha moment when you said, oh, this is right, this is on the right track, uh, have you had that moment? Did you have it early on, or how did that yeah, happen, think, if it did happen? Yeah, initially, um, you know, I'm an NYU uh, undergrad and had been looking for – I didn't want to work on an issue. I didn't want to work on a women's issue for an internship. I I really hmm. wanted to work at a place that was looking at women's potential as leaders, uh, and there were a couple of organizations at the time, this was the you know, late 90s, early 2000s, who right. were doing women's leadership, but it wasn't the buzzword that it is today. Um, hmm. So the White House project is, had started in 1999 um, under Marie Wilson, and um, I, that was my internship senior year. And it was quite formative in the sense that it was really figuring out if women were in positions of power in greater numbers in both politics um, and corporations and private sector, as well as looking at the cultural norms that, you know, kept women out of power, you know, what would the world look like? So it was a very challenging environment for me as a young woman. And she was a very trusting boss who, you know, the year after I was hired full time and the year after that I had kickstarted Vote Run Lead with another young woman and we were traveling Mm. across the country and that that was it. Um, (laughs) So, you know, really just thinking about, um, you know, it wasn't necess- I wasn't necessarily, I just knew it wasn't going to be about, you know, trying to work on a single issue, that it was really about how do we change who's in power in this country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's uh, uh, quite amazing, and I'll, I'll, we'll talk about this a little later, just to, uh, I guess, you know, as you, as I kind of look at where we are and look back, uh, the timing seems like it couldn't have been planned any better in <laughs> timing in the sense of where we are and what you're doing. But before we even get there, though, I want to talk about someone who was always a, a fan of, who who I always was a fan of, and that was uh, Ann Richards. Um, and uh, not until I read your bio did I know that you were the executive producer. Uh, I just loved I just loved her because she was who she was. She didn't try to change her accent. She didn't, you know, try to, you know, change that Texas twang, I guess you call it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Can you, I, I, obviously this show is not about her, but it is in some way about her and the work that she's done. Can you tell us a, a little bit about how we as a country and as Texas, how we got Ann Richards? Yes. Yes. Well, you know, part of why I got excited about the Ann Richards film, and to be honest, all I did was raise money, but that's the, that'll get you the, if you raise enough money, that's that'll get you a one, fancy yeah. title on a, a producer title on a, on a film. <laughs> that's right. But, um, you know, originally, and just understanding the power of culture, we had took 
we took the um, Shirley Chisholm documentary around the country in 2004 and how few women knew about Shirley Chisholm and what she had tried to do for the president in 1972. Um, And so really I got to see firsthand how power of film can inspire Mm. and get women's mindsets ready for, you know, potentially stepping into leadership. So when a friend approached me about the documentary um, for Ann Richards, Mm who was the first female governor and still only female governor of Texas, came wow. from a political family, you know, understood the political landscape, um, you know, famously said George Bush was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, used humor, um, really <laughs> understood the cultural and political moments, um, you know, talked about how she had good political hair, um, you yeah. know, didn't shy away from, you know, being the only woman in the room. Um, who's right. the mother of Cecile Richards, the longtime head of Planned Parenthood, who just um, just resigned from that post. And so when I got the opportunity to do that, um, I thought that was really powerful. Um, HBO actually picked it up and named it something else and did a much better job on the version that actually came out. Um, and now I have a, an opportunity to work on a film uh, with one of my own alumni, Ilhan Omar, hmm. who's the first Somali-American elected um, to any of the 50 state legislatures, uh, a refugee, a mom of three, um, only 33, 34 years old. And her documentary called Time for Ilhan is um, actually going to premiere at Tribeca in about five weeks. Oh, so fantastic. I'm excited to, to just see that evolution of, you know, right. telling the stories of powerful women. You know, you opened with it being Women's History Month. The more we share these stories of women and the more we do it in real time and we get to sort of see and touch and feel these role models, um, I think the more you'll you'll see both women and, and men of color, you know, step up as well and just a diversity in the kind of people who are running for office and leading. Certainly so. And, uh, uh, again, I just really, you know, loved uh, Ann Richards and, um, you know, and I, I – don't think I've seen the documentary, so I'm uh, really, really, really looking forward to to checking that out. And um, I, I want to stay kind of talking about history instead of maybe talking so much about, even though they probably overlap with my question. Where did the idea come from for vote, run, or or lead? And and a double question here. And can men use the same template? Uh, if we wanted to run? Mm -hmm. Great question. The impetus for Vote Run Lead came through um, the work of of Marie Wilson, my political mentor, who was the longtime head of the Ms. Foundation for Women. And Mm -hmm. that foundation Mm -hmm. was one of the largest granting organizations for women around the country. And what Mm -hmm. she saw was women advocating, doing lobby days at the Capitol, helping legislators write new laws around domestic violence or food, mm. pro, you know, food, and food voucher programs, schools. Um, and then they would, you know, a piece of legislation they worked for years to put forth could easily be wiped away in a conservative legislature. legislature. Mm. So, you know, that was really her, her impetus for thinking it through. Um, myself and another young woman got to really build what, the vision was for Vote Run Lead. Mm. Um, we had, McCann Erickson had come in and done the, a, a big pro bono to help us come up with, you know, the, the taglines, wow. the names. So That's we had great. a nice group of smart marketers. Um, but when the White House Project closed its doors, uh, Marie retired. And, um, you know, about two years later, a little less than two years later, I been doing more international work, which was a personal goal of mine, been doing more work with the corporate sector and academia with Barnard College. And the women were calling us to hmm. say that they were running. You know, the women who said wow. five to seven years, which was a bulk of the women, was were, were on a five-year plan. You know, it hmm. was five hmm. years later. And with Facebook and, you know, not having to change your cell phone number when you switch carriers anymore. <laughs> right. And, you know, we said, we've got to do this. That was, um, we, we launched officially as a standalone organization in 2014. I've got great co-founders from across the country who, you know, all got together and decided we have to carry the torch on, the, on women running for office because we could feel something happening, you know, not just a mm. uh, Clinton presidency, but we could feel it happening on the local level, which is, which is our specialty. Um, 
And then men, yes, we just did a, we did the first ever training at South by Southwest on how to run for office just a few days ago, which was wow. pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, about a third of the room was men. Yeah. And uh, mostly men of color. And, you know, we're training yeah. from the perspective I, of if you're yeah. outside the system, here are ways in yeah. which you can create new pathways. Here's how you play right. the game as an insider and an outsider. You know, you're not going to get a full-on endorsement because, you know, Jim John's son, Billy Bob, is running, and he's been right. in the party for 20 right. years. Right. So how do you navigate that? Um, how do you build your own political capital? Um, so right. I felt it felt really good in the sense of that it landed well, and we felt, uh, we felt good about that. The new curriculum is called Run As You Are, which can really work for anyone. Mm. But we love when men hop on our web classes because you can't run a woman candidate, you know, the same way you can run a, a male candidate. So for the campaign managers and the field directors, which are mostly male still, you know, we we do need more women campaign managers. They, they, you know, they're looking for a new playbook. And so they, I, I want them to, to watch the resources about why women need to lead with their qualifications, why telling stories is more powerful than a resume, you know, so Mm. really getting them in tune with what works for women. Uh, That's great. And, you know, um, uh, 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 as I think about it, I would have asked the question differently, and I, I think I would have asked it differently. And uh, I, I forgot the word that you used, and I think it was if you're not the majority, and, and that's a paraphrase, but yeah, if you're not the majority, how can you use the same template? Uh, and that's probably not even the best way to answer the, ask the question. But anyway, I asked the question. And I thought that was a great answer. And, and uh, Aaron, can you give an example, um, you know, if possible, of what's the difference between, you know, campaigning for uh, a woman and campaigning for a, a man? You're definitely going to deal with more sexism. It'll be – most of the time it'll be fairly subtle. So ah, you oh, want someone yeah. who has an eye for it. Um you know, when, when we're talking about women of color, you're getting that mix of a little mm-hmm. bit of racism, a little bit of mm-hmm. sexism, maybe mm-hmm. sometimes not enough to call it out, but how right. do you make sure that you, um, you know, you have, you have answers when things like that happen. There's research called Name It, Change It, which basically says you should yeah, hit be hard. For it. Yeah, be prepared and hit hard because you want to show that you're standing up for yourself and that therefore you will stand up for your community. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we... 60% of women on the campaign trails say they experience some level of harassment, both from inside the party or the other, you know, opponent. Too often it comes from, from folks who we think are um, on our team and maybe, maybe well-meaning, but, you know, maybe commenting on our looks or, you know, just taking right. it off track a little bit. Um, women right. have a, women are, um, have a tougher time with asking for money for ourselves. So we want to make sure that if you're a campaign manager for a woman candidate, that you're you're not letting her get off the hook, that she's picking up the phone and dialing for dollars. And she's, you know, we, we, we're great fundraisers for other causes, the, the school bake mm. sale, the community boards, you know, we'll, we'll fundraise for that. But when it comes to fundraising for ourselves, we have a little bit of a mental block. So knowing that about your female candidate will help. Mm-hmm. You know, but the yeah, good thing is not... that there's a lot of assets oh, too to – to, to women running, you know, we're, we're, we connect very well with the community. Um, you know, our networks are large. We have right. a good volunteer base, you know, right. anyone running for office, most women could say they're running for office and 15 friends are going to come to their aid. So, right. you know, you have a built in <laughs> network of women candidates that are very helpful. No, I, I only laugh because, uh, uh, you know, from my experience, I found that to be true. And, um, you know, uh, uh, Aaron, I just want our listeners to know that they're listening to the Danny Tisdale Show. And, of course, I'm Danny Tisdale, and this is part of Harlem World Radio. Uh, we're the number one company in the world for all things Harlem since 2003, and we're talking to Aaron Velarde about a subject that I love. It's politics and uh, uh, women. I was raised by my mother and my sister, who were extremely strong women, and uh, I thought they would have made great governors, mayors, you name it. So this is right up my uh, alley here. And so without further ado, we're going right back to uh, Ms. Gallardi here. And um, 
what was I? Uh, there's so much now that I want to uh, uh, talk to you about even before I sent you the questions. Uh, what <laughs> advice, uh, Aaron, do you have for uh, young ladies who uh, uh, love the idea and want to make it make what they do successful using vote run or lead? What advice do you have for them? What should be their first step? The first step should be, I hate to do the humble plug, but the first step should head over to vote.org. <laughs> you know, the backslash learn section will be actually releasing a new website in April that is going to be a very clear resource center right. for campaigning, for communications, and getting yourself familiar with the political language, with the, um, you know, what, why you why you're networking, why you're putting yourself out there, understanding mm-hmm. your purpose, you know, really digging into what motivates you to do good in public life um, and getting educated about what does a city council do? What does mm-hmm. a county commission do for King County? You know, what can I fit this into my life? We just did a poll with um, mm. Marie Claire last year and millennials were mostly concerned wow. about making a living. Um, young right. women were concerned about making a living and doing politics and how do I fit it in when it's maybe not a full-time job and I want to get my career off the ground? So having those questions, we answer a lot of those questions. We have a lot of resources, and we've got a great community that if we can't answer it, someone around the country will. But I would say for yeah. young women and young men, start talking to someone. You know, pick your city council person. Ask for a coffee. Um, you know, hmm. the, the borough president, her, her office is in Harlem. You know, it's on 126th Street or 125th Street. Oh, Gail Brewer, uh, yeah, right. Gail Brewer. You know, she is a fantastic um, elected official, very open. If if she can't answer it or, or meet with you, one of her staff will. So I, you know, I think going and having that conversation and saying, I'm interested in public service because if folks know you're ambitious for this, even if it's just a little, they'll think of you, they'll have your resume, you'll get an internship. Yeah, they'll remember you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes, and so right. putting it, politics is IRL, you know, it's in real life. So I would just get out there and say, I'm, I'm interested in public service. I'd love to see where I can, you know, where I can fit. Oh. So let me ask you, uh, uh, Aaron, if, does that apply? Because I did use the word young lady. What about someone who's middle age or even, God bless them, older? Or, or, or is this a young person's game? I am seeing the age decrease by about 10 years for the women who are running, which I think is fantastic because we've seen a bulk of folks actually be in the 45 and above range. So it's good to diversify um, and get women who are in their 20s, get women who are in their 60s, 70s. Um, So we want want that full age range. But we have something on our site called the 90-day challenge. And I recommend this very much for, you know, whether you're 35 or 65. The 90-day mm-hmm. challenge is 30 steps in 90 days that will help you build your political capital. And mm-hmm. it does have the more, prof- you know, woman with a full-time job or stay-at-home mom. It has a right. little bit more of an adult um, angle to it. And it's everything from making sure you have a, you know, Twitter account that follows political leaders because we know politics on, on Twitter is one of the biggest conversations happening. <laughs> um, yes. To, you know educating yourself, figuring out who's in your community, if you might want to run for office, what that looks like, assessing your networks, you know, who do you know from Mm. work, who do you know from college, Mm. who do you know from the neighborhood. So that's a very good, um, very actionable set of skills that we found has worked across the country. Um, And it's been built by local elected officials who, you know, they're giving you a sample email. If you you want to shout at your city council member for a day, here's a sample email that you should write. So it's oh, very great. practical to help, um, you know, to help adult women who, you know, may have great careers that they love, but, you know, look up or read the newspaper today and go, no, I've got to do something. <laughs> something more than what's going on. I, I Definitely yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, with Hidden Figures, <clears throat> Mr. Weinstein, uh, Me Too, our, our president, and some of the comments that he made on a bus. Why mm-hmm. do you think we find ourselves at this moment in time? Uh, I know it's a tough question. Maybe it isn't. But why do you think we find ourselves in this moment in time? Yeah, I don't Is think it just it's just coincidental or? 
I don't think it's a coincidence that the number of women running for office is on the rise and that this yeah. national conversation about sexual assault and harassment. These right. are, you know, this is about power. Both of right. those things are about power. Um, the widespread recognition that we, you know, we thought we were going in the right direction, whether you loved her mm-hmm. or not, you know, you thought we were going from the first right. African-American president to the first female president. Right. But the, okay, the world's sort of going in the right trajectory. <laughs> Um, to have that halted with um, a very 1950s style, you know, make America great again, right? It was very extraordinary to women, to folks of color, to anybody who wasn't benefiting in 1952. (laughs) Um, So that was definitely not women. Um, And the... Wasn't a lot of people. Yeah, it was a real, you know, I think shell shock for women to see that folks in this country did not value um, the experiences of women and would still vote for Mm. somebody. Well, you know, he's good on taxes, right? Versus he, you know, may or may not have had, you know, minors are involved. Like this, (laughs) this is a big deal, folks. Um, So it was this real disconnect, I think, with our fellow countrymen, you know, Um, the urban and rural divide felt very real. Um, I think you see that in how women voted, to be quite honest. You know, this is not all women, not all women are in the resistance. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's really just, for me, I think most women, though, have had enough. Um, and mm-hmm. it is so in our face that we're not going in the right direction, that you had to do something. And I honestly right. think the power of social networks in this putting, simply putting a Me Too on the Internet and seeing 90% of your social media feed, do you remember those weeks? I mean, it was Amazing. everybody you could possibly think of had experienced yeah. this. Um, oh. So you can't I, close I, your eyes to it. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I just, uh, you know, for my species, you know, just uh, extremely embarrassed. And, you know, as I said, I, I always remember my mother telling me, you know, think about your sister and put yourself in her shoes, put yourself in other people's shoes you know, when you want to have Mm -hmm. an idea of how they feel and, you know, uh, and before you open your mouth to say something and it's not positive. So uh, I'm just uh, amazed and embarrassed. And maybe you agree, maybe you don't agree, but I always feel that, you know, things happen for a reason. And I think we have this president for a reason that we Mm. understand and learn that, you know, here's what we want and here's what we don't want. Here's experience and here's not experience. And, you know, um, and I, I just hope we're paying attention and we, we learn from it. Okay, that's my political yeah. statement. I'm getting off the soapbox. I can agree now with that. Stepping down. <laughs> <laughs> but before, uh, uh, you know, we're down to our last couple of minutes here, uh, Aaron, and I just want you to, you know, uh, give your URL so that people can go to the website. They can, you know, look at some of the, the, the programs that you have and talked about uh, before the clock ticks on us. Can you do that, please? Great, great. VoteRunLead.org. That's dot .org. You can just Google Vote Run Lead on both Face Twitter, um, Instagram, and we've got a couple events in New York City coming up, one next week, uh, two next week, actually. Um, part of the UN on Tuesday and um, wow. part of a resistance conversation, I think, on Tuesday night. So right. like, events are coming up. Web classes are free. You don't have to log in. You can go and search specific classes around wow. African-American women's leadership. Wow. And if we can't answer it for you, you know, we'll get you connected to the right group because, I mean, what we're doing at Vote Run Lead is we're training women to run for office and we're training them to win. 70% of our alumni won last year. We're teaching you to run as you are. You don't have to turn into a robot or a lawyer or, (laughs) um, you know, the skills you have are actually the skills we need right now. And I think you're right that it's this presidency is teaching us that um, regular folks need to be involved in government and their voices are very needed. Yeah. I, I, you know, Aaron, this is one of those, you know, you have those, I have those moments every now and then it's like, why not think of that? You know, it's like it, it makes a lot of sense. It's what's needed. Uh, the timing is on point. Uh, and I know that, you know, no one's responsible for the timing other than just the cosmos. But, 
uh, Aaron, I just love, you know, what you're doing. And, um, you know, my last question is, you know, when you're in Harlem, do you have a favorite place that you like to go to? Well, I live in Harlem, so I I love all of Harlem. Um, I live on Manhattan oh, Avenue, mm-hmm, oh, great. which is great. So, you know, I Aaron, love Manhattan Avenue Park, of course. Ten so I love, I love all of it. Well, Aaron, you know, I would love to have you back sometime, so I will reach out to you to ask you back. But thank you for being on the show. Aaron, our new thank you. Harlemite that I didn't know was a Harlemite. Thank you for being <laughs> on the show. Love, love your you work. Thank you. Bye. Take care. I never thought I'd get to cast a spell in Hogsmeade. I never knew what 120 miles per hour felt like until Fast and Furious supercharged. I never thought coming face to face with a hungry T-Rex would make my dad scream so loud. And I have never felt more scared or alive. Buy your ticket online and save up to $25. Visit UniversalStudiosHollywood.com. Valid online on one-day general admission for select dates through May 24th, 2018. California residents only. Restrictions apply. Hi, I'm a helpful Southern California Honda person. And recently we've been doing random acts of helpfulness, like repairing a family's home after a water leak, helping pay for a wedding, and surprising a deserving child with a birthday party at the L.A. Zoo. And during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event, we can help you too with a great deal on an award-winning Honda, like the all-new and completely redesigned Accord, the 2018 North American Car of the Year. Click the dealer locator link to find a dealer near you and go to SoCalHondaDealers.com to suggest a random act of helpfulness for someone you know.